Hey, everybody, welcome into the T360 weekly webinar series. We're going to let people come in here for a moment. I see the attendee count rising, and so that's excellent. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in. I'm going to try to see if I can call out some folks. We got some tech. We got we got some Nashville, Tennessee in the house. Thank you, Gary, for, for being here. Um, some names I don't know, too, so... Well, actually, surprisingly, a lot of names. Canada, Todd, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have a great conversation. Clint, uh, we were just talking about New Orleans. Um, so thank you for joining us, uh, Clint, with Revy Realtors, the site of our uh, T3 Tech and T3 Data Summit coming up at in September, uh, at the end of September the 29th. And so uh, as people are gathering, we've got a nice crew here. I'd like to introduce my co-hosts for today. I've got my uh, teammate, Derek Taylor, our resident AI expert, the man, the myth, the legend. I love working with Derek. And um, I'm so happy that he is so passionate about AI because, man, is it timely and hot right now. So, Derek, thank you so much for being here. And um, also, we're here with Omer Granat from Localize OS, a T3 Insider client of T360. Uh, we've had the privilege of working together uh, for about over a year now. And uh, uh, Omer uh, was a robot at the first T3 Tech Summit. Or actually, that's technically the second T3 Tech Summit. And so, um, Omer, it will be very good to see you in person this year at the T3 Tech Summit. Um, but we've also had the, the good fortunes of doing some thought leadership together um, over the past uh, several months and uh, documenting the new AI buyer experience. And that's going to be fun today. We're going to show you uh, that as well. And that is some of the conversation will be predicated on the new AI uh, buyer uh, experience. And so this webinar uh, this week will be from challenge to opportunity, delivering value through AI enhanced client experiences. Now at the T3 Leadership Summit, um, AI was uh, heavily in the con conversation. Our opening keynote speaker, Allie Miller, led the way with some fanfare, uh, very well received uh, presentation. And then our own Derek and Prem brought in some practical applications of AI at the Leadership Summit. And Derek's been recently speaking all across the industry. Uh, he was at Beaches MLS last, uh, but probably a good 10 times in the last uh, 12 months or so. Uh, uh, on the speaker uh, circuit. So Derek, um, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to pass the microphone to you. This is a hot topic, a hot area. Today, we're going to be focusing on more middle of the funnel journey, but you're going to also set the stage of some of the trends that are happening in AI as we speak. So uh, thank you so much, Derek. Thanks, Travis. I'm really excited to be here. You're always so good for my ego. It's great to be part of the T360 team. Um, and having Omar with us as well is, is really exciting. I'm going to share my screen real fast and start off talking a little bit about um, this new opportunity that we have uh, for artificial intelligence with uh, the real estate industry, specifically for us as real estate practitioners. And um, make sure I got this thing moving. Can you see the screen okay? Okay, yep. Awesome. So, you know, why is this exciting? What What's going on here? Uh, well, a, the growth of artificial intelligence and the adoption inside of all industries right now has just blossomed. We expect by 2030, the market size uh, will be 13 times its current size, that the software revenue will grow at least 10 X from 2018 to 2025, which is, you know, we're only a year away from 2025 now. And then 83% of the companies uh, have made AI a priority. And that means a top line priority in their business going forward. Uh, so it's definitely something that everyone needs to stay on top of. And we really enjoy that. We had Ali Miller at our T3 Leadership Summit recently uh, do a speech. Ali is a leader in AI. She comes from many different companies. I think specifically last, she came from um, Amazon. And um, Ali said the AI that we have today is the worst AI that we'll ever have in our lifetime. And if you're like me, you're pretty excited about what we have today. So can you imagine what's coming up for us in the future? Um, but all of that 
excitement leads into like one thing, and that is how do we really start to apply artificial intelligence to our business as real estate practitioners? And I think the best place to start for everyone, because I get this question a lot, um, how do I, how can I start plugging into artificial intelligence in my business? And I think the biggest mistake people make right now is just plugging in AI to plug in AI, right? They feel like there's a hole there and they have to plug it with something. And that itself doesn't really give you very good outcomes. It's going to be really frustrating if you take that tack. So what we suggest is you, you find a desired business outcome, whatever it is in your business that you want to make a change to, uh, pick that thing, then figure out what it is that success looks like in the change, figure out the typical use cases that get you to that change and what data is required. All of those things combined will change your workforce. The things that you're doing will make the enhancement that you want to happen, but you've got to start with a desired business outcome, find those key performance indicators, find the actual use cases, and then the require, required data to make this happen. And now, here, how important is, is data in this whole equation that you've kind of just illustrated here? Because there's AI, you know, now ChatGPT, everybody's probably has an account or is using it in some capacity, but that's only going to get you so far. And so having unique data sets or having your own data um, is valuable. How, how valuable? So first of all, without any data at all, there is no AI. So that, that being said, you have to have some sort of data to get artificial intelligence. It works and survives off of data. It's the, it's the oil that feeds the machine. But also the results that you get from your artificial intelligence will be uh, determined by the data that you're feeding it in a way that basically, if I were to ask ChatGPT today, what should I wear when I go on stage tomorrow? It'll tell me I should probably wear a black suit, for example. Now, if, if everyone asks ChatGPT what they should wear to go speak on stage tomorrow, it will tell everyone that they should be wearing a black suit. So everyone shows up in a black suit and everyone knows that you asked ChatGPT uh, to, what to wear to speak at your event. That's a good example. So to get a, to get a more personalized result, uh, to get a result that better fits your business, you need to have a very specific data set to give that artificial intelligence context. Um, and that will give you the best works, uh, enhancement to your workforce and, and things that you're doing. But we know that there are really three clear paths to leverage artificial intelligence for real estate professionals. The first one is a con improved consumer experience. And, and we see that consumer experience becoming more and more important every single day in what we're doing. Um, the consumer for the broker is, is the, of course, the person buying or selling the house, but also the people working with them, the, the uh, agents that they've chosen to be partners with them in their business. Um, that will allow them to have better operational efficiency as well. So using AI to increase the operational efficiency of your business and your agent's business, and then also improving business intelligence. So you're able, able to make better decisions using AI to help you make those decisions. Those three things are the three clear paths right now to leverage um, AI in your business. So also uh, did some work with uh, MIT recently looking at a project that they did where they were launching or studied where major businesses launched AI into their business and how successful that was. And they took a lot of case studies to make this data work. But what they found was you have um, an opportunity size. So how much change can I make to my business? Positive change can I make to my business? That's the opportunity size. And then how fast can I make it happen and how much risk is involved in that? So this graph here shows you that if they use an existing vendor with artificial intelligence, they had the largest opportunity size and the shortest time to market and the lowest risk. If they used a new vendor in AI, that was the lower opportunity size, but again, less risk, shorter time. A cloud vendor would uh, really only be at an enterprise level, but that was kind of the middle of the road. If you hired a consultant to do it for you, you had more risk and then the least desirable was to do it yourself. And we always hear this, how can I do it myself? I think what we're seeing here is you don't really want to do it all yourself. You really want to lean into someone who's an expert in artificial intelligence to help you get the most uh, opportunity out of the 
project with the least amount of risk in the shortest amount of time. And I think the best way to apply this in kind of thinking generally is to look at the AI marketing funnel, specifically when we're talking about consumer experience. The marketing funnel, as we see it today, is you know awareness, getting people aware of your business, considering your business when they're looking at opportunities and uh, other businesses to look at. They're converting them. So actually getting them to use your business after they've made their consideration. And, and then finally, keeping loyal to your business. And then finally, at the very end, creating these really exciting advocates for your business. And AI can help you in every section there. Awareness, of course, getting people to understand who you are and what you do. Um, you can use AI to automate gener uh, automate content to help you improve your SEO, to create a more personalized experience for the person who is being educated and to help you create visuals. All those can make you uh, much better at the awareness section. If you look at the consideration part of the funnel, that's where people are deciding whether or not they should use you. Um, being able to use chatbots and AI assistants in this section is really, really useful. Helping you engage with prospects through personalized chat interactions, providing valuable insights and market analysis tailored to those people's interests, um, addressing concerns and highlighting unique value propositions that you have, and then also guiding those prospects to take the next step in that buyer's journey. And you know, if you haven't already mapped out your buyer's journey, that's a really good way to start thinking about this because then you'll know at what area in that journey can I start applying or can I bring in my vendor and help them start applying as well. Conversion is the next area. How do I get them to convert into using my product? And personalized recommendations, so important. Automated follow-ups, dynamic pricing, um, loyalty, and then getting them to be loyal to you, predicting customer churn, providing loyalty programs and more personalized programs for people. And then again, AI powered customer support, being able to get people to get support answers faster and uh, more accurately using artificial intelligence is really important as well. And then finally, advocacy. How do we get those people to stay with us and tell everyone that they know about how wonderful their experience was? First of all, you got to provide the great experience. But second of all, you can use AI to uh, look at the sentiment analysis of their interactions with your company. And then you can help you identify the people that really loved what was happening. You can look at automated review requests, getting those review requests out there automated and shared. And then finally, content creation. Uh, all those are really important. So, um, Sorry, I'm having a tree cut down in my yard. If you can't hear it, it's really loud yeah, I'll, right now. I'll, I'll take it from here. Um, and so uh, I'd like to invite our our special guest and T3 Insider client, um, Omer Granat, the OG, and no no pun intended with his initials, but uh, one of the OGs in uh, AI in, res, in, in real estate. And so Omer has been doing uh, artificial intelligence before it was cool, before chat GPT was even a thing. Um, and and on everybody's radar. So uh, Omer is going to take us through some practical applications of it, how it can enhance the buyer journey um, and potentially seller journey as well. We're going to focus on this middle of the funnel client experience that Derek set the stage for. So Omer, why don't you share your screen and, and take it away, my friend? Great. Uh, thanks, Derek. Thanks, Travis. And, and great to be here with everyone. Um, okay. Jump right in. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Great. Awesome. So uh, the focus for today is, you know, how do we, you know, we're in challenging times. How do we leverage this ch these challenging times uh, into opportunity, and how do we deliver value? Um, just to set the stage, I think if you look at the last five years, uh, there is no doubt that they have been very challenging. Right. There, there have been a lot of challenges. Just to name a few of them, you know, fixed 30 years uh, mortgage rates more than doubled. Uh, supply was cut by half. Median home sale price went up 40, 50 percent. Uh, mortgage as a percentage of median household income more than doubled. Uh, and the outcome of all of this is that if you look at the actual uh, most of the large metropolitans in the U.S., uh, close to 50 percent of them are basically priced out. Right. So the median household cannot afford the median house, which is quite wild. Uh, and the result is obviously 
you know, 35 drop in percent drop in transactions in 23. And I think we're now 10, 15% drop uh, on top of that in 24. So uh, again, I think challenging times. On top of that, there's all the uh, commission uh, lawsuits. Uh, the gist of it now is that list, listing side are prohibited from including buyer compensation as part of the uh, marketing portals. Other players are prohibited from stepping in and filling in that gap. Uh, and explicit buyer representation is required. Uh, when is that supposed to kick in? You know, in, in the next few months. Um, so again, just a lot of uncertainty. So, so why, you know, why do we even say opportunity? Um, before we talk about opportunity, just to set, again, set, agree on sort of the base, base assumptions. One is uh, buy side agents are not going to disappear. The, you know, people say you know, some think they, they will, some, think, some say they won't, but I think generally the, the consensus is that they're not going to disappear. It's also pretty clear that sell side agents are not going to step in and do both tasks, right? We already have customers who literally send us pages uh, that sell side, that listing agents are preparing of things that it, they are not going to do uh, for you if you come to them without a buy side uh, buyer agent. Um, buy side commissions are negotiable. So almost by definition, they will be negotiated uh, and they will shift a bit from the current baseline. Um, but now, and, and again, now more than ever, um, really the onus is on the buy side agents to justify their worth and to, to sort of qualify and, 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 and make sure that they're worth sort of what they're getting paid for. Um, and this is really where the opportunity lies, right? So if you think about a challenging market, historically challenging markets uh, drove to uh, basically clear clear winners uh, coming out from, right? If you leverage opportunity, if you become significantly better than your competition, you have you now have a strong opportunity to break through and really uh, and really lead um, lead the pack. And so part of what we've done with T360, and again, just to set the stage, what does it mean to actually be exceptional? right? What is how how what are all the ways you can leverage AI? Um, so you want to provide exceptional service, right? You want to be available. You want to be responsive. Uh, AI virtual agents can do that for you now. You have data integrations that allow you to bring insights and, and valuable um, data points in real time. Uh, you can be personalized in a way that was not available before uh, at a scale that is unlimited. Um, you can have clarity in communication. So you can scale your communication, but still stay involved and maintain your brand, your voice. Uh, and when you think about exceptional systems today, again, mostly those that are based on AI, uh, based on technology, you know, they allow you to constantly communicate your worth and your value add. Uh, they provide, they allow you to have very detailed uh, documentation and paper trail, which we all know is, is a challenge in our industry. Uh, and then lastly, where AI really comes in is that they are proactive and intuitive to use at scale, right? These are no, it's unlike prior technologies where adoption was a huge issue. Today's solutions that are based on proactive AI are really plug and play. If you find a great solution, you plug it into your system and it starts to add value. And so that's a big differentiation. Uh, if you look on the right. Oh, sorry, Omar, I was gonna add you. Yeah, this, this image on the right came as a byproduct of some of the research that Localize and T360 did together. You can scan that QR code to get the full copy of the report. Um, we took a look at some of the more manual reactive processes that current buyers agents do. Um, and that's on the uh, on the left, excuse me, the left hand side. And then we kind of verbalized that in the uh, in the research report. And then on the right hand side, we said, how can AI be your assi a, a, you know, assistant, be proactive, be intuitive and innovative and really change some of these uh, behaviors? And so this is an uh, awesome study that we did. I recommend that you get the full study. This picture is just one small piece of it. Um, so uh, a nice takeaway for those of you on the webinar today. Awesome. Yes, strong plus one. Um, okay, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna move forward. And so, uh, you know, now I want to break it down into uh, into the actual sort of day to day. How do you implement it? Right. So. Uh, Taking a look at real estate transactions, value delivery system, right? How, how do you generate value in our industry? Um, you have three main stages to every type of transaction. doesn't matter if it's sell, buy, rent, uh, mortgage, insurance. 
there's the lead gen phase, there is lead nurturing conversion where you take those leads and create you know, someone who wants to transact. And then you have the deal closing, the mechanics of documentation, you know, money exchanging hands and, and so forth. When we look at this industry, the biggest problem that we identify today is the middle part of the funnel, right? Because the first part of lead gen is, again, it could be improved, uh, but it's mostly solved, right? You have uh, Zillow, you have social, you have Facebook, you have Google. Uh, if you have a budget, you can generate leads. It's pretty instant. Uh, again, you can optimize your investment, but it, you know, it's doable. Everyone can do it. The end of the funnel is also uh, pretty much digitized. It's not that long. Um, you have great solutions like uh, DocuSign and Skyslope and other solutions that allow you to manage the transaction at the end. But really, if you look at the middle of the funnel, uh, this is where the opportunity and the challenge uh, is in our industry, right? It's it's a very long stage. If you buy or sell, it's a three to 12 plus month long process. It's non-linear. Uh, people speed up, slow down, they stop for a while, they come back. Uh, everything is analog, right? Really, this stage hasn't been meaningfully disrupted since the invention of the phone. Uh, it is completely manual. You have to deal with many, many uh, customers at the same time. It is just extremely difficult to succeed. But if you think about it, this is really where value is created, right? This is where brand differentiation is set. This is where your financial performance is set, right? If you are very good at this stage at converting leads to transactions, you will be profitable, you will be big, you'll be able to scale. If you're not, then you, you're just not going to be a viable business. So the most critical part of the process is also the most unsolved. And, and that is what we, uh, this is what we focus on. From, from a technology standpoint too, if you go back one slide really quick, the uh, lead nurturing and conversion, this lengthy three to 12 month um, disparate siloed um, bucket of technologies is really what has the average brokerage using 20.4 tools and trying to sift through almost 2000 technologies in the residential real estate space. And frankly, we're still very analog in this area, whether it's CMAs, open houses, showings um, to your communication, your CRM, and, uh, and, and some of the marketing that you may be doing in this lead nurturing conversion. Um, it's We've started to add up the technologies and they keep on stacking and stacking and stacking. Um, very few of them actually communicate, integrate, and provide a backbone for you to operate off of. And so we've gotten into a situation where this is an unsolved area of the funnel. While it's arguable that maybe lead generation is perfectly solved, um, uh, we do have a pretty good beat on it as an industry. Um, and frankly, it's it's the conversion side of the lead generation that is why we get a bad rap in the industry where it's only, you know we're only converting around 3%. Uh, that means 97% of our original raw resources that we generate in the industry are wasted, thrown away. And then you kind of get back some control as a brokerage or as an industry in the deal side of the equation where you have you know, transparency from the digitization of the transaction. But that middle of the funnel is, is Wild West still. Uh, and that's what Omar is trying to say. And I'm kind of saying it from a different perspective with technology uh, silos and, uh, and disparate data solutions in the middle of the funnel. <clears throat> Yeah, and again, I think Travis, you touched you touched on it, right? If you look at the industry's average conversion uh, of lead to someone who actually transacts with you, the industry average is below one percent. Right? It's mind blowingly low. If you are ten times better than the industry, you still lose ninety percent of the leads that you spend money on, and so the opportunity is just massive. Um, okay, so this is this is really where localized comes in. Um, we built technology to profile, qualify, nurture, and engage each and every one of your leads in your databases, uh, again, through AI, in a way that feels extremely uh, human, and that allows you to optimize and maximize the value of that middle of the funnel stage, right? Convert as many of the leads that you bought, uh, that you paid for, into actual transactions. Uh, how do we do it? Uh, there are sort of four key components, and we'll, I'll show examples in a second, but fundamentally, there is a conversational engine uh, a chatbot. Uh, it's a mix of technologies. It is ChatGPT. It's stuff that we built in-house. It's Google's dialogue flow. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff, but you know it, it's great. And I'll show you an example of how good it is uh, in a second. 
we have a recommendation engine that can look at every listing in the market. Doesn't matter if it's you know a thousand or sixty thousand listings, and rank them per person, and be able to do that in real time as data comes in. We have a machine that me measures and tracks how people engage with uh, the recommendations, the communications we send them, and then we have something that ties everything together. Uh, it's worth saying that most of our, the vast majority of our communications are over text. Right, so we use text as, as the way of communication with, with customers. Um, and again, the goal is not to replace the human, but rather to replace the top 70% of the repetitive tasks uh, that an agent or a broker has to do uh, before they get to someone physically going to see a place. So how does the workflow um, go? You, uh, if you, again, the, the notion is you have way more many leads in your database than those you meaningfully engage. If that's the case for you, uh, then we can provide a solution. Uh, you plug in, you partner with Localize, you, you connect your lead acquisition channels, your CRM. It is very easy to connect. At that point, we start to communicate uh, with each and every one of your buyers. Uh, we do what I said before. We nurture, qualify, profile, recommend apartments, do it in a way that feels extremely human. When someone gets to a point where they raise their hand figuratively in one of many ways and say, I like this apartment, I want to go see it. At that point, we pull the agent back in, we give them a quick update so that they can hit the ground running on everything we know about the customer. We make the intro and we say, take it from here and go and try and close the deal. That's kind of at a very high level, the, the process. And now I want to give you, again, some examples. It is just the, the tip of the iceberg, but some, some sense of how that actually feels, right? So uh, through great AI solutions, you can now really level up the human AI interactions. So this is an example of hyper-personalized outreach. Think about a case where you have, as a brokerage, you have 60,000 people in your database. If you wanted to engage two more, each and every one of, the, of them in a personalized way, that would be humanly impossible to do. Uh, without something like this, right? So this is an example of a, of a first outreach text uh, that we send when someone signs up. Uh, you know, it goes something like, hi, Rachel, this is Hunter. I'm partnering with X at this brokerage. Um, I'm here to assist you in your home search. We say in the first message that we use AI, but immediately we jump into, I think we found a potential match for you. We send a link and we ask, what do you think, right? And from that point on, the system starts to measure everything that the buyer does. Did they read the message or not? Did they click the link? Did they spend more time looking at the image of the kitchen or the bathroom or the living room? You know, if they wrote back, anything that they do contributes to their profiling and, and contributes to us being able to better engage uh, in the next step. And again, this is an example message. It's not a one size fits all. Every one of those 60,000 people will get a customized message based on what we know about them. Zip code, budget, uh, geo, preferences, if they have a dog, if they have kids, and, and so forth. Second is, again, you can build channel-specific communications at scale, right? If you have acquisition through Facebook and you have acquisition through Zillow, you can provide a different customized, tailored, onboarding sort of intro into the funnel uh, message, right? To Again, to increase engagement. Um, you can create real-time smart market updates, right? So not just set a filter and get, then get a dump of all the leads, that, the listings that match the filter. Uh, basically, this is an example of, uh, you know, someone who looked at a specific property. And we now tell them that at this point, supply of this type of specific listings in the geo, in the budget that they're looking for is going uh, almost riskily low. And so if they want to move forward, if they want to act on it, now would be the time because market uh, availability is going down. Uh, and you can see that, again, the, the response is great and someone immediately responds and it also creates some sort of FOMO. And so again, this is an example. Uh, you can create dynamic market opportunities, right? We have someone that we've nurtured for three, four months. Uh, at some point, one of the listings that they were interested in uh, has a price drop. We immediately are able to go back, right? And again, think that every one of those messages happen in real time for hundreds of thousands of people, right? We're able to go back and say, hey, uh, you know, the listing that you viewed two weeks ago uh, is now, uh, there's a price opportunity, it went down, you know, do you want to move forward? And you can see that again, immediately the person within 12 minutes in this case asked to go and see and schedule a showing and, and move forward with, with that opportunity. Um, 
And then lastly, again, there's an ability now to create human-like experiences. So uh, this is an example of we sent someone a recommendation. They replied with, hey, I'll have to connect at another time. Hobby is dealing with a layoff. Thanks. And you can see that the AI understood the context and replied, I understand that you're going through a tough time. Take the necessary time for yourself. And when you're ready to revisit the home search, I'll be here to assist you. The system automatically turns off automatic communication, sets a reminder for X time forward. And again, no human was involved in this example or in any of the examples that I showed you. Um, so, okay, things to take from it. Um, well, one more thing and then things to take. One is the examples I showed you are unlimited scale. We at this point uh, nurture and engage over 300,000 people uh, in real time every day through, and we do it with under four minutes response time with eight humans behind the scenes, right? So think about the scale, the ability to have this level of personalized communication with hundreds of thousands of people, low digit single uh, minute response time with you know under 10 humans behind the scenes is, is really the unlock that you can now get with, with technology. So what, what to take from it? One, um, get your running shoes on. Uh, now is the time uh, you need to, you know, you should adopt, you should lean into technology. Uh, if you do, there's huge opportunity. If you don't, uh, you'll probably be left behind. Uh, the second thing to Derek's point, buy, don't build. There are great solutions. Um, if you plug into an existing great technology, then you get the benefit of all the prior learnings and technology that, that someone already built instead of playing with it as a hobby Im immediately. Uh, and you can get a solution that significantly moves the needle for your business. So again, identify your biggest challenge, uh, choose the right technology, uh, and buy them, build. And my parting thoughts here, Omar, thank you very much, would be, uh, like Derek said, find your desired business outcome. If you don't know your journey that you're that you're trying to take your consumer on, then that's already a problem. Sit down, work with your team, document what's the ideal scenario what do we want to have happen what would create a better customer experience this notion of experience management is coming into real estate and it now more than ever do we need to prove our buyer value proposition and by sitting down and mapping out your your buyer journey this is an opportunity for you guys to weave AI into the industry, into your business, into your client experiences. There are existing products out there like Localize OS that are already doing that. I've been working with Omer on things like buyer representation agreement, buyer communication and messaging, all kinds of unique things that can be put into your customized workflow, leveraging AI. So that's the biggest takeaway. Sit down, map out the buyer experiences, look at where AI can enhance your processes. And if you can't figure that out, reach out to us. We're here to help you guys. Um, and that wraps our T360 weekly webinar series. A special thank you to Derek Taylor and to uh, Omer Granat from Localize OS, a great T3 insider uh, uh, and client. Bye, everybody.